Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world, and you, beautiful individual. Today, I would like to speak about giving your language and your communication power and, well, soul again. Of course, language is a very intricate topic, and I am in no position to truly go in-depth in what language truly is when it comes to definition of material materialistic science and so on. When it comes to spiritual science, however, the language is, well, of utmost importance and, well, it is the number one tool to actually communicate language, sorry, the language, the picture language, the symbolic speech and invoking certain feelings of morals and so on. If we cannot affect a human being by our speech, we are not doing it correctly. But once you have, well, gotten to know these things, it is all about responsibility. The language and responsibility goes hand in hand. Being able to truly be aware and to truly have a certain longing for wishing to put out the right concepts and words to mankind without, well, feeling judgmental or degrading and so on. It's looking down on other human beings and have a certain feeling of grandeur. You get my drift? That is not what we are standing for at all. What we are standing for is, well, as I just thought uh, for not long ago, the quote of the musketeers, and both those quotes are needed together, that is the human being. All for one and one for all. That balance in the middle there brings you the Christ principle. Of course, it is all about standing strong in the morality and the love. And it is not about preaching. You know this. You are fully aware that we are not just preaching. We are practicing. We are everyday training, unfolding, aspiring, creative. By doing so, you know you can speak about certain things that is to come in the future because you are on that path. But we cannot speak about it as it is here now. Because it is not. It is in seed form, as we say. That is why we do things now and unfold things slowly and steadily. Lifetimes. And all the damages and the scruffles and wounds we have gained in this life. Well, first and foremost, we will never be able to heal these wounds in this lifetime. But with over time... Over periods of lifetimes, our soul will again, well, both make amends and also balance out the wounds and heal it based on our faith, worship, devotion, and also effort. Conscious, active effort. So, when you bring about power to your language, it is all about bringing concepts and pictures that can be understood by, well, a rational mind truly. A true reasonable mind can pick up on these things and understand where I'm coming from because it is a reality we can practice every day. It is not a theory, it is not an abstraction, it is not something that cannot be grasped a hold out of. It is truly a practice we can do by meditating, become conscious grabbing a hold of our inner faculties for spirituality. And we also need, well, reverence. We need to acknowledge that there are higher powers that are guiding us. If we do not and only believe, then we were left to our own devices, obviously. Think about that for a moment. Making you receptive to higher powers brings in higher powers. Denying higher powers leaves out higher powers, you see? It is all about, when you acknowledge higher power, you ask them for help. That is, the re that is the picture here. If you deny them, you are pushing them away. And what can't reach you, you cannot gain, obviously. And that is what I also mean by 
God does not reach everyone equally because of karma. He loves everyone equally though. So we stand from that state of loving everyone. That is a standard respect and love and common ground for every single human being. What comes thereafter is from every individual. What does every individual speak from their own inner being? Their longings, their fears, their joys, their aspirations and so on. We do not judge it in any way, but we listen. Because everyone loves to express themselves and their soul out to the world. But it is important to have a certain balance, of course, because one can let oneself go if we are not, too care if we are not careful. Of course, it is all about feeling the situation. So when you sit steady and stable in the silence, a lot of things can become very clear. Like, as I, I also, uh, about two, three minutes ago, I just also had a thought about, without my face, my soul wouldn't be able to smile. Without my face, I wouldn't be able to express my joy in a physical form, except maybe in gestures, you see? And that is why that a face is kind of the number one. There is a reason why we say that the eyes is the window to the souls. Window to the soul. <laughs> because you can truly pick up every single micro expression and we human beings automatically, if we are aware of it, know what every single expression means. Because we all have the same universal human expressions. We know what the expressions mean because they are humanly universal. You see? So, joy, I know what joy is, you know what joy is. Unless, I'm not going to generalize here, but I'm pretty sure you know what joy is. You know what pain is. You know what, well, gratitude, I suppose. You see, all of these things are things both me and you know the true spirit of. It is beings in a sense. They are beings and they are very distinct. It is the same with uh, the other example I use since we are this triune human being that in a, is in a constant struggle from two sides. It is the chaotic and the orderly or the gooey and the prickly or the plus and the minus or the positive and the negative. That is Lucifer, the chaotic, Araman, the orderly, but not orderly as in enjoyably orderly. No, he sucks every joy and fun out of it. It is pure duty, do your, do your thing, or you get my drift here. It is, what are you talking about? When, when did you start to take life so seriously? We take life sincerely, but seriously, how gravely seriously can you be? Honestly, how much life can you suck out of every day? That is Araman. Lucifer is, well, he doesn't have very much ground, ground to stand on because he is not a physical being. And he is very, very, very chaotic. He wants to go everywhere, screams and shouts extremely loud. But he is extremely creative and has a sense for beauty and art. Don't get me wrong on that. But, he, but neither Arman nor Lucifer is our leader. The Christ in the middle is. And he balances out both these sides to bring a perfect equilibrium. And that is the scale we are. Our scale on the one side is Arman, the other side is Lucifer. And we are the fulcrum of the scale that balances out these two arms. We hold them in balance. That is the picture. But we can also, that, this is the cool part, we can also, well, decorate and beautify and shine up that fulcrum as much as we like because it doesn't affect the arms, right? So you can, fi you can beautify your fulcrum, your scale, the, the main scale, the main frame, not the arms. Leave the arms be, they need to be balanced there. But, well, decorating your fulcrum, unfolding your bodily and your being's potential, aspiring, has nothing to do 
with any kind of connotations of what we normally would put definitions on unfolding our potential. Unfolding our potential doesn't have any context around it except wanting to become a better human being every single day. Doesn't matter what others say, doesn't matter what others believe is the right thing to do. You know this is the right thing to do. Unfold your potential to become a more loving, nurturing, caring human being. Act like a predator and you will gain those results. Act like a, act like a victim and a prey and you will get those results, right? These are standard realities of living, truly. It is all about how much are we willing to change for the future. And one step at a time. And do the help we can. And to truly wish well every individual. Once you do, you are guided. Because... You have something to strive for. You have something to wake up in the morning for. You have something you truly want to bring power to. Your soul and spirit. So you can bring out inspiration the way you uniquely can do. We have different strengths and different areas of expertise in life. Some are good at communication and inspiring. Others are good at putting these inspirations out to action. Others are good at overseeing and keeping a creative mind and certain... You know what I mean here. Everyone has their different strengths and places. And everyone has their beautiful, unique soul. And everyone is loved by God equally. Hence, I love them equally. And that is the practice we do, consciously, effort, with effort, with longing. Once you do, you are awakening, you open your nadis first and foremost, every point in your nervous system to receive, well, inspiration. Imagination, inspiration and intuition. You open yourself up to creativity, to the spiritual that is what it means to acknowledging higher powers. And I will leave you with this. I had fun. It was a little hard to find a topic today, but I think this was good. It was all about power to words. But I think I made an example out of what I meant. It is all about me grabbing your attention here and now to guide you to see the world a little differently. Just for a moment, you can come back to yourself anytime. If you do not like what you hear, go back to yourself anytime. There is no shame in that. But I just do this to show you a little different perspective of things. Because I have been given this perspective. I have had my past perspective. I have been many different groups of people and tried to find my identity in many, 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 many places. In the end, the only place I truly could find my inner soul and spirit, guess where that was? in this present moment without being being led astray by everyone else telling me who I am when it is me that lives with myself 24-7. I know who I am. And the judgments from others in the end is just that opinions. Opinions, of course, there are certain there are certain values to these opinions. But it is all about can you listen objectively to that opinion and observe if it is in line or against what you practice so that you can adjust. And that is how we become better human beings by learning, growing, trial and error. And trial and success too. Of, but the trial and error brings, it is like, ah, let's see, this didn't work. Let's try it a little different, shall we? Right? And that is when you readjust. That was just an example, but I will leave you with this. Thank you so much for listening to me. May Father, Holy Spirit, Christ, the hierarchy, ancient masters of old, our ancestors, bless you, protect you, guide you, love you, and may you find your individual path that can participate and give to this world as only you can do. Love you. Thank you so much. Goodbye.